Welcome everyone to uh, Jenkins Windows Service uh, ML Completion Support uh, presentation. So I'm uh, Udi Chaturanga and uh, I'm from Sri Lanka and uh, I'm an undergraduate of uh, <coughs> Motor University and uh, this is my first time of uh, Sound of Code. And uh, I had a little bit of experience in uh, web development and uh, with Angular and uh, .NET. So this was my background. Okay, uh, now let's move into uh, Windows Service Wrapper. So if you talk about Windows Service Wrapper, uh, so Windows Service Wrapper is a tool uh, which we can use to run uh, Jenkins as a service uh, in Windows machines. And uh, this service is actually, uh, features actually bundled into the Jenkins core itself. And uh, we have to provide a lot of configurations into Windows Service Wrapper. So at the initial, state uh, of this project i mean before we start this uh, GSO project uh, we will uh, configure windows service wrapper by an xml configuration file uh, so you can find the project repository in the uh, given link and uh, if you talk about current configuration actually the current configurations mean the uh, configuration that we had uh, uh, at the initiate stage because uh, the thing we did in this project uh, is uh, update this uh, configuration management so uh, at the uh, initial stage of uh, this project uh, we configure the windows service wrapper uh, by an xml configuration file and uh, xml configuration file should be uh, name should be same as the executable file name uh, i mean the windows service wrapper executable file name and the xml file should be located in uh, directory where Windows Service Wrapper executable is located, though uh, in uh, ancestry directory, that's how we, uh, how the approach that we had to find the configuration file. And uh, some problem that we had uh, at the initial stage is uh, we can't uh, uh, specify the configuration file uh, from command line interface, and uh, there are no XML schema uh, validation, and uh, yeah. <laughs> And so the uh, how configuration management was at the start of this project. Uh, so if you interested to find a sample XML configuration file, you can find file in the given link. So uh, this is how a sample configuration file, I mean the XML configuration file looks like uh, in Windows Service so Wrapper. There are a lot of configuration uh, apart from this. I mean there are uh, this uh, image contains only a few of them, and. Uh, so uh, my project in uh, Google Summer of Code 2020 was uh, configuration as a YAML configuration file. So if we talk about the project task that we had to complete in this uh, as uh, YAML configuration support is the major uh, deliverable and a new CLI uh, and the XML schema validation are the uh, other deliverables that I have to uh, provide actually in those uh, second and third one added at the uh, added, uh, while we are uh, doing the project and uh, my proposal uh, contains uh, the YAML configuration support part and uh, while we are uh, continuing with the project, uh, those uh, second and third deliverables comes and those are uh, awesome actually. And uh, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, YAML configuration support and why we uh, decided to move into YAML configuration. So, you know, YAML is uh, less verbose and much more human readable than XML. I mean, XML is a great, uh, language that we can use to uh, manage uh, configuration. Uh, anyway, uh, YAML is uh, becoming more popular among uh, configuration management tools and also YAML is uh, lightweight than XML and also JSON. So anyway, XML is a really good tool anyway and uh, you know YAML is uh, becoming uh, much more popular among the community. So I think it's really fair uh, to uh, provide uh, YAML configuration support for Windows Service Wrapper for uh, our valuable uh, use. Okay, and uh, this is how a uh, sample YAML configuration file looks like. Uh, there are a uh, lot of configuration apart from this as well. So uh, here are a few of them, and uh, obviously, you can see it's uh, much more human readable and it's uh, kind of beginner friendly uh, than XML. Okay. And uh, if you talk about the tasks uh, that we had to complete uh, under YAML configuration support, so first thing that we had to do is uh, passing YAML file. So we had to uh, convert YAML file into an object graph. So status is released actually. Uh, we uh, released a, a feature a preview release a few days uh, ago and uh, 
you can uh, find a pull request uh, that I created in the Gimli. So those are merged actually, and the uh, release has been released. And uh, I use the third part library, which is uh, called uh, yaml.net in order to pass the YAML file, uh, which is an awesome library to pass YAML files in uh, C Sharp. And uh, though we uh, decided to go into YAML configuration, so we uh, will continue the XML support as well. Uh, so definitely we have to uh, update Windows Service Wrapper as we can support both XML and YAML. So I had to update that as well and uh, I did that and released uh, and uh, you can find a pull request uh, regarding this task uh, in the given link. And uh, uh, if you talk about uh, extension support for Windows Service Wrapper YAML configuration. So as in Jenkins, uh, we had a few uh, extensions in uh, Windows Service Wrapper as well. So currently there are two uh, extensions uh, which are uh, Runaway Process Killer and uh, Shared Direct Mapper. So uh, we are providing, uh, also those uh, extensions need uh, configurations, external configuration. So uh, we are providing configurations to those extensions uh, from uh, the main configuration file uh, that we are used to configure Windows Service Wrapper. Uh, so those extensions needed YAML configuration support. So under this pull request, uh, I have done the, those uh, that, that thing, and uh, you can, it's also uh, you can uh, find that uh, feature in the released as well. And uh, if you talk about schema validation, so you know uh, when we are writing a YAML file, uh, there are a lot of configuration that we have to provide. So it's really uh, fair to provide some schema validation support for users, uh, so because they can easily uh, do uh, specifying those uh, configurations. So uh, at the moment, uh, we have provide external, uh, sorry, uh, JSON schema file to uh, validate. Uh, YAML configuration schema. So users can use uh, some utility tool from Visual Studio uh, Marketplace uh, in order to uh, validate uh, your YAML configuration file using a JSON schema. And uh, yeah, definitely we will uh, integrate uh, this feature into Windows Service Wrapper. Uh, so uh, then uh, definitely uh, we can uh, validate the configuration file uh, before uh, Windows Service Wrapper using uh, those configuration. I mean, uh, at the moment, uh, the configurations are used on demand. So if there are any uh, mistake in configuration uh, that users specify, uh, definitely a uh, service will be crashed. So definitely we have to uh, validate and verify this uh, configuration before uh, using. So up to some extent, now we can do this because uh, I have done a little bit of uh, validations uh, using this uh, JSON schema. Uh, but anyway, we have to uh, we have to do uh, a little bit uh, in this validation part. So definitely, uh, in future, uh, even after this, so, uh, I am uh, excited to do, uh, do that task. And uh, you can file the JSON schema file in the given link. And uh, this is currently merged, uh, and uh, you can find the pull request in the given link. Okay, uh, some uh, unit test and documentation things were done uh, during this project and uh, there are a lot to do in uh, unit test and uh, I think documentation is uh, kind of okay and but but anyway, uh, I had to do a lot in uh, unit test coverage. So uh, definitely I will uh, work on that uh, after this. One. And uh, also you can help uh, by contributing uh, in unit test and documentation. And uh, so if we talk about the new command line interface, so uh, current command line interface has only commands, uh, I mean, uh, providing all commands and options. I mean, all the details will be uh, provided uh, as arguments, command line arguments. So we need to let user specify the config file from command line, and uh, we need to let user to skip the schema validation as well uh, when they are providing the command to uh, Windows Service Wrapper. Uh, so we needed uh, much more user friendly and uh, much more manageable uh, command line interface. So uh, we started working on that and uh, pull request has been created for that. And uh, there are a few things to do in this uh, task. Uh, and uh, this will be uh, merged into a version three patch that uh, currently 
uh, we are working on that and uh, uh, if you talk about status about uh, this task is not much yet and um, yeah uh, anyway you can contribute to that well. and uh, xml schema validation and uh, we are validate uh, xml schema against an uh, xxd file so there's open pull request for that and uh, there are a few things to complete in documentation part and uh, test coverage in uh, xml schema validation so yeah uh, those are the left in uh, xml schema validation part and uh, yeah uh, that's uh, all about uh, my project and uh, now let's uh, move into demonstration so okay uh, uh, i think you can see my uh, command line interface yes yes i can ah thank you okay okay uh, first uh, let's see uh, how uh, we can uh, use uh, the xml configurations uh, uh, with windows service wrapper so this is the uh, configuration file uh, that i'm going to uh, use to provide the configurations into windows service wrapper uh, so this is the basic uh, configuration file and uh, i'm using this uh, so we can uh, first uh, install the windows service wrapper uh, using as i manage windows service manager uh, so okay, uh, now Jenkins is uh, installing. Uh, we can check in Service Manager uh, with ID Jenkins. Yeah, it's here. It's uh, started it, and uh, we can start uh, from that. And uh, now let's uh, go to localhost and uh, let's see whether uh, Jenkins is running on port eighty eight one. And we can. Uh, Refresh the service manager. So, okay, now it's running. Uh, in the service manager, yeah, it's uh, working on uh, uh, working perfectly. And uh, yeah, uh, that's a, a little demo about uh, the current release. I mean, actually, that's uh, in that way we can use uh, YAML configuration file. That I just wanted to uh, cite that. And uh, okay, let me stop the Jenkins server and. Uh, install that and uh, okay then uh, let's uh, move into schema validation part okay so uh, i uh, mentioned that uh, we can use uh, utility tool uh, by windows uh, sorry uh, visual studio marketplace in order to uh, schema validation uh, for yaml configuration file uh, so you can use this configuration file and uh, you can use uh, the tool called uh, utility tool called yaml uh, by i think uh, it's by uh, Red Hat. Uh, you can you, you can use this uh, tool and uh, you can uh, provide the schema file uh, to uh, to uh, this tool and uh, you can use uh, that to validate your uh, YAML schema file. So then uh, users can uh, easily uh, do this. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, suggestion uh, config suggestions is there and. Uh, okay. Jenkins and uh, this is not uh, showing an error. Uh, if you hover over this, uh, it's a uh, name, property, description, SQL, uh, which are the uh, compulsory uh, configurations uh, are not there. And uh, let's and uh, let's uh, add those as well. And um, description. And uh, executable let's say. Let's use Java as executable. And uh, there is uh, auto completion. I mean, not actually auto completion. This uh, just generating the config uh, names uh, also there. So now users can easily uh, use this tool uh, to validate the JSON file uh, externally. And uh, now they can easily uh, validate their uh, uh, YAML configuration file using this tool. And uh, if you talk about uh, new command line interface, actually uh, this is uh, not completed yet, but uh, there are a few things uh, that I can show in uh, this. Uh, let me show. Uh, so if we talk about uh, the 
the current uh, command line interface so this is the way uh, we provide uh, the configurations sorry uh, the details uh, that need to uh, windows is that executable so if we want to pass uh, let's say configuration file from the command line actually it's not uh, this feature is not there anyway uh, if we wanted to do that then we have to use some uh, kind of way like this so uh, we think uh, it's uh, better if we can uh, uh, provide uh, with uh, named arguments uh, uh, something like that so that's why uh, we move to a new command line interface which is uh, more user friendly so if we see the help uh, these are the commands uh, which are available and uh, now this command contains uh, options uh, which we can uh, use to uh, use uh, easily uh, uh, while we are providing commands into uh, Windows Service Wrapper. So in this way, so uh, you can uh, provide the configuration file. Let me copy the part of, uh, let's take the XML file, XML file. I copy the file path and now in this way, uh, you can uh, pass uh, uh, commands and options into no says flexible so C is uh, represent the config file so we can provide the config file <coughs> sorry using uh, uh, this way so no says uh, starting with uh, xml so in this way we can use uh, the new command line interface so but uh, anyway it's not the much that you can't use it uh, but uh, there is the there's open pull request uh, for this uh, feature so uh, you can uh, using that PR and build from there <clears throat> okay uh, that's all about uh, my demonstration so uh, as I mentioned before as uh, improvements uh, what we can do is uh, actually we can uh, uh, integrate uh, we have to do integrate uh, JSON schema validation and uh, there are a few things to update in uh, new CLI and uh, XML schema validation uh, which I will uh, do after um, just of uh, 2020. Uh, so uh, those are all about uh, my project presentation. So I need to thanks uh, Jenkins uh, Project Org admins and uh, my project mentors. They did a really good job in this. Actually, uh, I, I didn't had the kind of system tool development uh, experience before. Uh, I had a little bit of uh, web development experience, but uh, I could. Uh, uh, finish this task successfully with the help of my mentors. Uh, I'm uh, really thank to them, uh, especially like Nanesho, Nextern, and Michael Sirioli uh, for helping me with this. And uh, I need to thank uh, Jackie Sogadnis, and uh, you did a great job, great job, awesome uh, job uh, in 2020. So, uh, so that's all about my project presentation, and thank you very much uh, for me. And yeah. Thank uh, you, Budika. Uh, would the uh, mentors like to add a few comments? Sure. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for Budika. Um, uh, yeah, this project was uh, slightly isolated uh, from Jenkins at the moment because uh, Windows Service Wrapper is located in the uh, separate GitHub organization. Uh, but it has a serious value for Jenkins because Jenkins uses Windows Service Wrapper for all kinds of uh, Windows Service Management including uh, Windows installers, including uh, Jenkins Core, uh, any kind of agent installation, also plugin which provision agents. And the uh, support for YAML configuration actually simplifies integration with configuration management tools, um, which is a, a great addition in the future. And I believe uh, we will soon be able to adopt it uh, once uh, the feature gets uh, a bit more adoption and feedback. And yeah, Gavin Budika, yeah, he was working on a new area uh, because yeah, Budika has a lot of experience uh, with uh, web development. Uh, development of system tools is slightly different area, but uh, still um, uh, all the main deliverables for the project have been landed. Um, uh, yeah, they got uh, good, uh, good, uh, good uh, test coverage and uh, overall the quality is quite good. We discussed a few major uh, issues, but now they're fixed and I believe that soon uh, we will be able to make it available in the Jenkins project. So uh, Budipa did a really uh, good job and uh, hope 
hopefully we'll be able to continue the project uh, so that uh, the remaining deliverables uh, could be landed. So, thanks, Bodika. Thank you, Thank you, Martin. Thank yeah. you so much.